This is test review number two, gases and mole, much more practice review. I'm going to work out all the problems. I actually have all the answers online, but it might be helpful for some of you to watch some of these questions. So let's get right into it. Question number one says, calculate the temperature for a sample of oxygen gas when 75 grams of oxygen gas has its pressure changed from 650 milliliters of mercury to 1.5 atmospheres when the original temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. Also, the gas's volume changed from 3.55 liters to 12, I'm sorry, to 1,255 milliliters. So hopefully right off the bat, you recognize that this is a before and after situation. This is not just using PV equals NRT one time, but actually twice. So probably not a bad idea to go through and calculate this. So we're actually looking for the temperature here. So what is the temperature? And it's probably going to be T2. So we have our 75 grams, which we can safely assume is um, N1. And it has changed its pressure from 650, so there's a P1, there's P2. When the temperature's original temperature was 20 degrees Celsius, let's just go ahead and change that right now. So 20 degrees plus 273 is 293 Kelvin, which is equal to T1. And the gases volume changed, so V1 to V2 to 12, to 1,255 milliliters. Now, one thing I did notice is that the 75 grams here, we don't see anything else about that changing. So what we can do is we can actually cross that off. That is not um, something we want to look at. That is actually a distractor. So be careful with that. And always understand or write down what we know. Probably not a very bad idea to do that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write down what we know. So I have my P1, V1, N1, T1, and I want to know what these values are equal to. And yes, I do realize this may take a little bit of time. P2, V2, I'm sorry, put N2, let's keep them in the same order here, N2, and T2. So let's find out what these values are equal to. So P1 is 650 millimeters of mercury. And we'll convert one to the other. And probably we'll convert that one. Uh, V1 is right here at 3.55 liters. Um, N1 is equal to N2, so it does not change. T1, we converted to 293. So 293 Kelvin. Our final pressure is 1.5 atmospheres. I really like my atmospheres. Our V2 is 1,255 milliliters, which we can very quickly change to liters right now. So that would be equal to 1.2. N2 is equal to N1, and T2 is what the question is asking. So again, just organizing your thoughts in this format is going to be helpful to some extent. So let's go ahead and write down, actually let's do our conversions real quick. So I'm going to convert this into atmospheres. And so 1 kilopascal is 7.501 millimeters of mercury and then and it doesn't matter which way you go but I'm going to go 101.325 kPa equals one atmosphere so that'll give me a value there and let's see who else do we need to change I think that's it so we just need to find out what that, that pressure is right 0.855 now I'll leave that value in my calculator but that is an atmosphere all right, so that's what we have. So we have a P1, V1, T1. So let's go ahead and write the variables out here. So we have PV equals NRT, and we have a P1, V1, T1. Now, I'm not going to do this for the after variables, but we don't need to. So since we're looking for T2, 
what I want to do is I want to make sure that t is in the numerator. So I'm going to take all the known variables and bring it to the other side of the equation. So that means I'm going to divide by p and v. So my equation now looks like this, where I have actually nothing at the moment on the left side, and I have nRT, and that's equal to p1, v1. All right. Then what I want to do is get the things that don't change to the other side of the equation. So I will divide that on both sides. And what that's going to look like is, let's extend that page a little more, is that the equation will now look like this, where I have 1 over nr is equal to t1, p1, v1. Now, some of you might look at that and think, ooh, that looks really ugly. We don't care about looks here, all right? So we have our variable that we're solving for on top. Now we're looking for T2. So we would do the same process as going through uh, dividing the variables that we want on both sides and then getting it to this equation. So re really, after doing it with the final set of values, oh, then your equation looks a lot like this. Now the nice thing is, since the n and the r don't change, we really don't even need to focus on that. So now the equation simply looks like this, where we have t2 over p2 times v2 is equal to t1 divided by p1 over v1. Now, we do our final rearrangement here, so we're going to take P2 and V2 and multiply it on both sides so that we have our one unknown variable all by itself. So now the equation looks like this, where T2 is equal to T1, and as a heads up, the variable you're solving for better have its opposite on the numerator. So we want T1 on top. P2, V2, divided by P1, V1. So that's our rearrangement of the variables going from the problem to this. Okay, so once we have that, now we can just substitute our values in. So let's take this, bring it over, bring that over, and let's solve. So, and notice that R is not in this. So my T1, and go to your list here, is 293. My P2 is 1.5 atmospheres. My V2 is 1.255 liters. My P1 is up here at 0.855 atmospheres. My final volume is, oh, deck on it. Sorry, my initial volume, my initial volume is 3.55 liters. And again, when you're working with this many variables, it is a really good idea to have that list here to keep you in check so you don't accidentally do what I just about did by almost inserting the V2 where the V1 is at. So again, staying organized, I, and I will give you plenty of room to do all this. Now again, on the marker board, or the smart board here, I'm trying to blow it up large enough so you can see it. So let's get a value here. And my calculator says one point, or I'm sorry, 181.66, so I'll say 182, and it should be Kelvin. Now. And let's see here, so the pressure gets smaller, the volume gets larger, so yeah, that seems reasonable. All right, number two. Calculate the volume of ammonia gas in H3 produced when 75.3 grams of nitrogen gas reacts with 18.6 grams of hydrogen gas. When the ammonia was produced in the reaction, the pressure of the ammonia gas was 1455 torr and a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. Well, before we do anything, let's go ahead and convert those 
and to things that we can use because I'm going to tell you right now, we have a stoichiometry problem. How do you know that? I have ammonia, I have hydrogen, I have nitrogen. So I know I'm going to be using PV equals NRT on this. So I need to have these values at the appropriate uh, uh, units here. So. So the temperature here is 348 Kelvin. And then my 1455 Tor. Again, you'll have these conversions in front of you, but one kilopascal is 7.501 Tor. And then 101.325 GPA equals one atmosphere. And again, I'm leaving those values in my calculator. All right, so we have, let's go ahead and, and go through this process. So we know that we have a stoichiometry problem. So it says what volume of ammonia is produced when 75.3 grams of nitrogen reacts with 18.6 grams of hydrogen. So not only do we have a stoichiometry problem, but we also have a limiting reactant problem. So let's write our balanced equation. So we have uh, nitrogen gas, and we have hydrogen gas, and it forms ammonia, so NH3, okay? And let's write down the values that we know. So we know we have 75.3 grams, and we also have 18.6 grams. We are looking for the volume. Yeah, let's get that down. Good. Okay. And so since we're looking for the volume, let's write down a few other things that we know. So it says that the pressure is one. Temperature is 348. Oop, sorry. Okay. So here's an interesting situation. We are not at STP, which is going to take a little bit longer here. However, we can still compare these two gases to each other. Probably the best way to do this is well, we're not worrying about um, using these values here, actually take two. All right, so since this is, we have two values for our reactants, we know we have a limiting reactant problem. So we have to do what's called a limiting reactant step. So your limiting reactant step involves you determining which of these will run out first. So step one, we have to write a balanced equation. So is this balanced? Doesn't look like it. So we have two here and we'll have a three there and since we have a two there, two there, we're balanced. All right, so step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, take what's given and convert it into moles. Now, looking at these gram amounts, it's very difficult to do, to get an idea of who the limiting reactant is. So I'm just gonna pick the biggest value here. And again, we'll talk our way through this. So what you do is you start with what you know. So we know we have 75.3 grams of nitrogen. And step two is to change what's given into moles. So one mole of nitrogen is equal to two times 14.01. And then I want to get rid of the moles of nitrogen and compare it to the moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to go moles of nitrogen to moles of hydrogen. So then I plug in my values. So I have a three here and a one here. And then what I need to do for step four is convert back to the desired units. Well, since it's telling me it's grams here, I need to get the hydrogen back to grams here because if I had moles, I really couldn't tell if I had what I needed. So let's get it to moles. So one mole of hydrogen is equal to two, point, or two times 1.008. So let's get a value here, and then we'll talk. So the value that I get is 16.25. Grams, right? and that is of hydrogen. 
All right, so let's talk ourselves through this. Okay. If I used all 75.3 grams of nitrogen, I would need 16.25 grams of hydrogen to completely use up all the nitrogen. So if I use all the nitrogen, I need 16.25 grams of hydrogen. How much do I have? I have more. So that means that I will use all my nitrogen and I'll have a little over two grams of hydrogen still remaining. So since I'll have leftover hydrogen, my limiting reactant is nitrogen. So again, let me talk this through. So if I use all of my nitrogen, I only need 16.25 grams of hydrogen. I have more. I will use all of this. I will have leftover of this. So since I know who my limiting reactant is, I'm going to use only that value to answer the question. So we'll start again with this. So again, this is my limiting reactant step. This step right here only tells me which of these two values I will use. I don't do anything with that number there. So don't sit here and go, hmm, what can I do with that number? Well, technically, you could use that number to determine how much ammonia, but I wouldn't. I would stick with the limiting reactant amount. All right, so let's see here. So we have our 75.3 grams of nitrogen. And we're going to convert that into moles. So again, 2 times 14.01. And then we will get rid of our moles of nitrogen to get moles of ammonia. And the mole amount, I think, was 2. So 2 there. Okay. No, if I stop here, then I have my mole amount. Now, which is nice because I already have my temperature, I have my pressure, I'm looking for my volume. So really, I'm solving for my number of moles. Once I have that, I have everything for PV equals NRT. So we will stop right here. We're not going to go any further. We're not at STP, so you can't do the 22.4 liter. And deal there. equals 5.3, 7, we'll say. And then I have that value in my calculator. And again, that is of ammonia. So now I'm ready to plug in my values, or actually rearrange my values, the variables first. So PV equals NRT. And again, I think I'm looking for volume. I am. So what that means is I need to divide pressure on both sides. So now my equation looks like this. So I have NRT over P. And then from there, I can just take those values and plug them in. So I just found my number of moles, which was 5.37 gram. I'm sorry, moles. The R that I'm going to use, since I have atmospheres, I want to use the, the atmosphere R, so 0 0.0821 atmosphere meter. And again, we want to put the mole Kelvin on the opposite side. And the temperature, what is the temperature? 348. And my pressure is 1.91. Okay? So just looking at units, canceling those out. Atmospheres are gone, moles are gone, Kelvin are gone. We're left with liters, which is volume. Very nice. Eighty point four liters. Okay. Number three, a sample of helium gas has a volume of four thousand centimeters cubed at a pressure of two hundred one kilopascals at a temperature of one hundred thirty degrees Celsius. Calculate the mass of the gas in grams. So there's actually two ways that you could solve for this. We know that we have our variables here. Uh, we have our volume here, which we'll convert into liters. We have our pressure, which we'll leave alone in kilopascals. We have our temperature, which we want to add 273 to, so that equals uh, 403. And then it's asking for the mass. So you could rearrange PV equals NRT and solve for the number of moles and then convert the moles into grams, or substitute little m over big M 
4M in your PV equals NRT. We know what the gas is. It's helium. And helium has a molar mass of 4.0 grams per mole. So actually, I like that. That's going to speed things up. We don't have to do an extra step. Um, so let's, let's do that. So substituting this in for PV equals NRT will now give me this. It's asking us to solve for the mass. So what we want to do is, the, or I'm sorry, multiply the molar mass on both sides and divide R and T on both sides. So now the equation looks like this, where I have um, M P B over R T is equal to the mass. And then we can just plug in our values from there. So do we have everything converted? Actually, let's convert this first. So 4,000 centimeters cubed. And I spoke to you about that one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed earlier. So we know that we can get that to milliliters. So one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. So that actually equals 4,000 milliliters. And you know that there's a thousand milliliters in a liter, so we can say that that is right, four so liters. Take our four thousand milliliters, and we know that there's a thousand milliliters in a liter, so that means that we have four liters. So that is equal to four liters. All right. So the molar mass we said for helium was four grams, and again that's per mole. Per moles down there. Uh, the pressure. Pressure is 201 kilopascals. The volume we just said was 4 liters. The R that we need to use, since we have kilopascals, we need to use the kilopascal R, 8.315, and that's kPa, liter, put that mole Kelvin over there. And then the temperature, what did we say the temperature was? 403. Okay. Zap that. So let's find a value for that. But before we do that, let's cancel out the terms that we can. So moles are gone, liters are gone, <coughs> kilopascals are gone, <coughs> and Kelvin. So we're left with grams, which is very nice. And that gives me a mass of 0 0.960, we'll say. Okay. Number four, calculate the temperature of a sample of chlorine gas that is needed to react completely with excess, oh, that's a nice word for you guys, excess solid sodium to form 255 grams of solid sodium chloride. The pressure of the chlorine gas was 395 kilopascals within the 21.5 liter container. So this is nice. This is a good little problem here. So calculate the temperature. So we're looking for the temperature of a sample chlorine gas. All right, that is needed to react with. So we have chlorine gas, and it's reacting with solid sodium. And that's in excess. It even told us it's in excess, so that's very nice. Um, and it's going to form sodium chloride. And it says that it, the chlorine gas is at 395 kilopascals. So the pressure is. volume of 21.5 liters and let's see so we have 255 and we're looking for the temperature okay and so we have 255 grams of solid sodium chloride well, this is nice okay this is not a limiting reactant problem why because we know who the limiting reactant is and we know that that's an excess so let's go through the steps for stoichiometry and I believe we have everything but we do so now let's go ahead and step one, write a balanced equation. So we have two chlorines. So we need a two there, and we have a two there. <clears throat> step two, take what's given that we can convert to moles and convert that into moles. 
So we'll take our 255 grams of sodium chloride and convert that into moles of sodium chloride. And sodium is 22.99 grams plus chlorine is 35.45 grams. And then we will find out how many moles we actually have by doing our mole ratio. So let's move our moles of sodium chloride down here and we're looking for moles of chlorine because again, what we don't have here is our N and once we have our N, then we can solve for our T. So our um, coefficients, we have a two for the sodium chloride and we have a one for the chlorine. So let's get a number of moles there of chlorine. 2.18 and that's moles of chlorine. So then we can now plug that into our equation, PV equals NRT. So let's see here, we're looking for the temperature. So PV equals NRT, we are looking for temperature, so that means that number of moles in R needs to move. So now we have PV over NR, so we go to T plug those values in. So we know our pressure is 395 kilopascals. <coughs> our volume is 21.5. The number of moles we just found is 2.18. And the R that we will use is the kilopascal R, the 8.315. of a sample of phosphorus pentachloride gas that has a mass of 7,330 milliliters at STP. Now what's nice about this problem is we are at STP. So if you know that you're at STP, you can use this conversion where we have one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters. That is a nice little um, conversion there, especially for gases, because no matter what the gas is, as long as we're at STP, which is 273 Kelvin and one atmosphere of pressure, any gas will occupy that volume. So we can just plug this all into one equation and make it real nice. So we can take what we know, our 7,330 milligrams, and this is of phosphorus pentachloride. And of course, we want to change this into moles, so we need to get it to grams first. So one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams. And then if I stopped right there, I'd have my grams. So I need to convert the grams into moles. So one mole of PCL5 is 30.97 plus five times 35.45 and whatever that equals. So if we stopped right there, we'd have our moles. And then what's beautiful is we can now use that conversion to get rid of our unit moles and get our volume, which is what the question's asking for. So, whatever that is, we'll say eight, nine. And that is liters, so a little less than one liter. Number six, I believe this is the last one. Yep, it is. <coughs> if 55 grams of sulfur reacts with 65 grams of oxygen gas at STP, calculate the mass in grams of the sulfur trioxide produced. Now the sulfur that I have here is written as it normally is in nature, as S8. So we do have a limiting reactant problem because we have 55 grams of sulfur and 65 grams of oxygen. So let's start off with our writing our balanced equation. So we have S8 plus oxygen gas and it is going to form SO3. And the question wants to know, calculate the mass in grams. So we want to know, okay, what is the grams? And what's nice about this is we are at STP, which will save us a lot of time. 
however, we still have to find out who our limiting reactant is because we have fifty five grams of sulfur and sixty five grams of oxygen so first thing we need to do is balance this thing all right so uh, looks like we have eight of those so I'm going to definitely start off with at least eight of these so if I have an eight there so now I have 24 so I'm going to have a 12 there all right so that looks like that's balanced kind of an ugly problem but that's all right so it doesn't matter pick one so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the sulfur so let's start with the sulfur so we have 55 and it doesn't matter which one you pick 55 grams of S8 and what I want to do is convert that into moles so one mole of S8 is 8 times 32.06 and if I were to stop right there I'd have my moles of my sulfur but I need to compare it to the oxygen so I'm going to have a mole ratio so my moles of S8 to moles of oxygen so in that case I have a value of 12 here and a 1 there and I need to go back to grams so go one more step here so I have one mole of oxygen and that is 2 times 16 which is 32 grams so let's get a value here since I have 82.3 and that is of oxygen all right so based on this information who's my limiting reactant so if I used all 55 grams of my sulfur, I would need at least 82.3 grams of oxygen. I only have 65. In other words, there's no way that I'm going to use all of this sulfur because I, I simply don't have enough oxygen to react all of that sulfur with. So that means that this is my limiting reactant. So I will, if I were, if I would have started with the oxygen, then I would have had leftover sulfur. Okay, so since that's my limiting reactant, that's what I want to start with, the 65 grams of oxygen. And again, that was my limiting reactant step there. So I'm not going to use any of this information. I definitely am not going to use that number. That is just a reference to tell me who the limiting reactant is. So I want to change the grams of oxygen into moles of oxygen. And that's 2 times 16. And I will do a mole ratio for oxygen to sulfur trioxide. So moles of oxygen to moles of SO3. And my oxygen is a 12 to 8. And the beautiful thing again, we're at STP, so we can use that value there. So one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters. Let's get a number. That gives me 30.3 repeating, and that is in liters. And that's a SO3. 